What's up, Falcon Cove? I'm Sebastian Gomez with the Falcon News Network, and it's time for yet another weekly episode. Halloween was last week, and it was an extremely different year than any that came before it. Here's Camila with some fun facts about how people spent Halloween during the pandemic. Hi, my name is Camila Benavent, and here are some fun facts for Halloween this year. Most popular Halloween candies. Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, Chocolate Cups with Peanut Butter Cream. Snickers, Almond Hazelnut, and Peanut Butter Covered in Chocolate. Milky Way, Nougat and Caramel Covered in Chocolate. And Twix, a biscuit finger with caramel and a thin layer of milk chocolate. Jack-o'-lanterns. Originally, the pumpkins were introduced to the Europeans from the indigenous in 1600, after the tale of Jack tricking the devil into deals, and people celebrate him. By celebrating Jack, they created the iconic pumpkin face we know today. Halloween during COVID. Since most people are not allowed to trick or treating this year, there are a few things you can do. One, go ghosting. Make a goodie bag full of treats and leave at your friend's house with a gnome. Two, make a spooky treats. Make cake, cupcakes, or cookies and decorate them to make them fun and scary. Three, Halloween playlists. Put on some scary music and dance. Lastly, four, watch Halloween movies with your family. And lastly, haunted drive throughs People that usually do haunted houses are making them drive through so everyone can enjoy it. For FNN News, I'm Camila Benevente. Happy Halloween! Thank you, Camila. And now on to Fabiana to talk to us about the election and why it's important to us as students. My name is Fabiana Bello, and today we're going to be talking to Miss Christine Peoples, Maria Natula, Valentina Barrera, and Sofia Gonzalez. Being an active and informed citizen is part of your civic responsibility. And even though you guys can't be active right now because you're not old enough to vote, um, being informed is really important. There are websites like I Side With or All Sides that you guys can go to. And learning to be informed now on what's going on in the nation is a good habit to have so that when you guys are ready to vote, you will be informed and ready to go. The Republican Party and the Democratic Party are the two main parties here in the U.S. because we have a two-party system. Um, the difference is in their platforms and the Republican Party is generally considered the more conservative or right-leaning party. The Democratic Party is the more left or liberal party. Um, the easiest way to sum it up without looking into each one of the issues is that Democrats believe in more government intervention in your life and Republicans believe in less. The Electoral College is the group of electors who actually cast their vote for the president. When I go to the polls and I vote, I am voting for an elector, even though I choose a person who's the president's name on the ballot, I'm voting for an elector. In Florida, there are 29 electors, and so they will then cast their vote for the president in December. You need 270 out of the 538 possible electoral votes to win. Yes, I think we should care because it could make a really big impact for our country. Yes, I do care about the presidential elections because they care about my country. Yes, I do care about the presidential election because I care about my country and the future for all of us. Thank you so much, Fabian. November 9th marks the start of Holocaust Education Week in the state of Florida. We here at FNN are proud to help spread awareness for this very dark time in human history. Our team will discuss the Holocaust in three very different perspectives. We must emphasize that some of these images may be a bit difficult to see. First, we go to Sophia, who is going to give us a general overview of the timeline. Holocaust was a terrible time in history that affected the lives of many people. But what happened before that caused it, and what was the aftermath of World War II? I'm Sophia Brown, and today I'll be taking you through a timeline of the Holocaust. After World War I, Germany was trying to recover from loss and chaos. This began a time of weakness for the people and the economy that allowed extremist ideas to rise. The Worldwide Depression in 1929 was very tough on Germany. Political parties couldn't give their people hope for jobs and food, which allowed the Nazi party, led by Adolf Hitler, to have an audience. In January 30th, 1933, he was appointed as a head of government, Chancellor. Many were losing hope, so they went along with the changes Hitler was making at the time. Some of those changes were suspending the constitution, replacing the republic with a dictatorship, and made himself the most powerful in Germany. Nazis took away and limited basic freedoms. They said that the ideal community was German-blooded. Excluded and treated as threats were groups like Jewish people, disabled people, 
Roman Catholics, and other groups whose behavior or beliefs were different from the Nazis. Nazis wanted to get rid of Jewish people from Germany's culture, politics, businesses, and overall. They repressed Jews from their jobs and made their life terrible. They wanted them to leave, but travel was difficult, and few places offered safe havens for Jews. In 1939, the Nazis invaded Czechoslovakia, and World War II began on 1941, when Germany invaded Poland. That November, Jews in Poland were forced to wear an armband, or yellow star, to indicate that they were Jewish. In 1942, there was a Wanzit conference in Berlin for the final solution. In 1945, Auschwitz's evacuation begins the death marches. In spring of 1945, the Nazi rule was finally coming to an end. Hitler dictated his last statement from a bunker, and the next day, on April 30th, Hitler shot himself and died. Germany surrendered in World War II a week later, May 8th, 1945. The evacuation of death camps began in 1944, and the death walks caused the deaths of about 250,000 to 375,000 people. The Allies, Britain, United States, China, and the Soviet Union, conducted the Nuremberg Trials from 1945 to 1946. It was a series of 13 trials for criminals of the Holocaust. For FNN, I'm Sophia Brown. Thank you, Sophia. And now on to Zach with the discussion of the most nefarious symbol of the 20th century. Once again, I must emphasize caution as some of this imagery may be considered disturbing. The swastika, a symbol of peace, love, good luck, but most importantly, hatred and genocide. The swastika is a common symbol in Asia, as mainly Buddhists and Hindus use it in religious practices. They use it on statues, pottery, and even tattoo it on their body. In 1868, a German businessman discovered the ancient city of Troy, and with that discovery, he found the swastika, and introduced it to the Western world. The symbol exploded in popularity and appeared on many products, including a Coca-Cola bottle. But as the symbol grew in popularity, it was being used for something else, German nationalism. One group of people called the Nazis adopted the symbol and used it at their rallies. After losing the war, a man named Adolf Hitler joined the party and quickly rose to be their leader, and in a matter of 14 years, the party held all the power in Germany. The swastika quickly became the symbol of Germany and was feared among citizens who opposed the party. They used the symbol for 12 years until the end of World War II when the party collapsed. Seventy-five years after the end of the war, the symbol is used in a new threat, Neo-Nazism, or New Nazis. The symbols had many meanings, and there are some people who try to bring the swastika back to its old meaning. No one knows what the future of the symbol will be, but it's important to learn its history so it isn't doomed to repeat itself. Thank you, Zach. Mai will now introduce us to a Holocaust survivor and her story of both survival and hardship. We started to hide and we were hiding in different places and not always together, which was terrible. Uh, you are not allowed ever to go near the window, never. You are not allowed to wear shoes, ever. You are not allowed to flush the, the toilet. And you are not allowed to cough. You have to cough softly. And you are not a human being anymore.
you, you, you are told and you have to obey that you haven't got any right to, to be heard or seen by anyone around you. Thank you, Maya. Thank you for joining us. For the Falcon News Network, I'm Sebastian Gomez. Stay classy, Falcon Cove.